Lay your head where my heart is to be. Hold the earth above me. Lay down in the green grass. Remember when you loved me. Come closer, don't be shy. The train goes by, clear to thistles and brambles, whistle in the ramble. Now there's a bubble of me, and it's floating in the air. Stand in the shade of me, things are now made of me. Hello everyone! This video is a quick review of the special theory of relativity. If you are already familiar with the subject, you may skip this video and wait for the next one, in which I will discuss Einstein's field equations in empty space. Let's begin by considering the well-known Galilean transformations between a stationary reference frame and one moving with a constant velocity v along the x-axis. The position of a particle in the moving reference frame x' prime can be related to its position in a stationary reference frame x through this relation. It is customary, for the sake of completeness, to state that time is the same in both frames. Taking a time derivative of the first relation, we obtain the transformation relation between the velocities of the particle, as measured in the two frames. Let's apply these relations to the following thought experiment. Suppose we have three observers in a stationary reference frame, Let's call them Jerry, Elaine, and George. All three observers have synchronized their watches so that at exactly 12 o'clock, Jerry and George emit a light beam at Elaine. We can depict the situation diagrammatically on the XD plane. For historical reasons, we we'll let the vertical axis be the time coordinate. The factor of C, the speed of light, ensures that both axes have the unit of distance. In this picture, the trajectories of our three observers would look like this. The beams emitted by Jerry and George would follow trajectories 45 and minus 45 degrees to the time axis. Their point of intersection falls on Elaine's trajectory, as expected. Now, let's consider what happens when our three observers are moving together at a constant speed in a positive x direction. To an outside observer, their trajectories would look like this. Applying Galilean transformation to the speed of light for the two beams, where C' prime is measured by the moving observers, we obtain the speeds measured by the stationary observer. We see that to the stationary observer, Jerry's beam is faster by V, while George's beam is slower by V. That means that to the stationary observer, the two light beams have been skewed compared to those in the previous picture. As before, the two light beams intersect in Lane's trajectory at the same point in space and time. Everything is consistent with reality. Or, at least everything was consistent until Einstein came along. 
I'm not going to discuss here the real as well as thought experiments that led Einstein to conclude that the speed of light must be the same in all inertial reference frames. We will simply assume this to be true and merely explore the consequences of this assumption. The constancy of the light speed across all reference frames means that any light beam will follow either a plus or a minus 45 degree trajectory in the XD plane regardless of the speed of the light source. Let's re-examine the previous situation in light of this assumption. The trajectories of our moving observers will be the same as before. But Jerry's light beam will now be identical to a light beam emitted by the stationary observer at the same location and time. It will reach Elaine at this time and space. If George fires his beam at the same time as Jerry, it will follow this trajectory. But this would mean that George's beam reached Elaine before Jerry's beam did. This creates an extra event in the stationary reference frame. This cannot be a sustainable model of reality. To see this, consider what would happen if instead of emitting and absorbing beams of light, the space-time events consisted in creating particle-antiparticle pairs. We would have different numbers of particles created in different frames, which is absurd. In order to fix this problem, we must insist that Jerry's beam meets George's beam at the same point on Elaine's trajectory. But this would mean that according to a stationary observer, George fired his beam after Jerry did. The two events happen simultaneously in a moving frame, but not in a stationary one. This is called the relativity of simultaneity. The line connecting these two points is the line on which all clocks in the moving frame are synchronized. They all say 12 o'clock, which in physics terms means t prime equals to zero. So, according to the stationary observer, George fired his beam at some time and position t1 and x1 respectively. Let's figure out what t1 and x1 are. If, according to the stationary observer, the distance between Jerry and Elaine and Elaine and George is d, then these respective trajectories are given by these equations. We also need the trajectories of the two light beams, which we will label beam 1 and beam 2. T0 is the time at which Elaine receives the two light beams, and X0 is the x-intercept of George's light beam. Eliminating x from these two equations yields the solution for T prime. Eliminating x from these two equations and inserting the solution of T0 gives us X0. Finally, Solving these two equations for x and t leads to a result for x1 and t1. We can now write the trajectory of the green line in terms of t and x, where a is the ratio of t1 and x1. Keeping only these three lines reveals a beautiful symmetry. It is not hard to show that the blue and the green lines each forms the same angle with the red line. Since in a moving frame, Jerry's position is unchanging, the blue and the green lines form a coordinate system for the moving observers, such that any point on the spacetime diagram can be represented by either coordinate system. Now, let's work out the correct transformation between these two systems. We can start by rewriting these relations as follows. Note, however, that because both x prime and x minus vt are zero, we can multiply either side of this equation by any number, say f, and it will remain true. Similarly, we can do the same for these relations. For an arbitrary f, this equation is true only for the blue line, and for an arbitrary g, this equation is true only for the green line. In order to make these transformations true for an arbitrary point, we must choose f and g correctly. Einstein argued that both the moving observer and the stationary observer have a case when they each claim that they are stationary and it is the other that is in fact moving. To Jerry, George and Elaine, the stationary observers are in fact moving in the negative direction with velocity minus v. The transformations they would write down would look like this, where the prime coordinates are still referring to Jerry, George and Elaine. The rest is just a matter of inserting x prime and t prime from the first set into the second set and matching the x's and t's. The only solution to these four equations is this. Finally, we end up with the well-known Lorentz transformations. Okay, so what is the upshot of all this? 
Well, one of them is an invariant measure of space-time distances. Here's what I mean. Take this quantity and express it in terms of x and t. Working out the algebra, we end up with the same expression. It is independent of the reference frame. Since the y and z component are the same in both frames, we can add them to both sides. This looks almost like a square Euclidean distance in four dimensions. It is sort of like a distance in the sense that it gives a measure between two spacetime events that is independent of the reference frame, much like an ordinary distance in space. We can also express this in terms of infinitesimal distances in spacetime. We are now only one step away from general relativity. And that's all for this video.